Well, for more on what's being done to rescue the girls, I spoke with Rudy Atala. He formerly served as the Africa Counterterrorism Director at the U.S. Defense Department. Rudy, thanks so much for coming in. How much can these American and British teams do, do you think, to try and bring these girls back? I think they, should, they can shed some light on, on potentially where, where the girls are. Uh, many of them, when they were first uh, uh, kidnapped, several of them escaped. So they can interview, help interview, figure out. Also, uh, uh, potentially um, lead the, the uh, police into looking in the right quadrants. So it's, it's going to take some time. And it's, we're three weeks removed from when they were, yeah, when they were kidnapped. Yeah, it would have been so much better, right, if they'd gone in, obviously, in the first week. But what, what resources do the Americans and the Brits have uh, trying to monitor that region that perhaps the Nigerians don't? Well, we, we have uh, surveillance uh, capabilities. However, I, I, I haven't seen any evidence of uh, or discussion of, of providing, you know, overhead surveillance. Right now, it's uh, uh, law enforcement teams, investigators, uh, victim assistants, um, that type of stuff. So we'll, we'll see if this evolution will continue. I mean, good luck. Jonathan's under a lot of pressure right now to do something. Yeah. Do you think it was because of the international mm -hmm. pressure that he let these two teams in? We were just hearing there in that report that the Brits have been offering for three weeks Correct. to send teams in. Correct. I, I mean, th that's the difficult thing is uh, good luck has gone from, you know, trying to extend an olive branch to see if he can win them over to, you know, declaring the, the North uh, a state of emergency and going in with a crushing blow to try to defeat Boko Haram. And Sheku, the leader of Boko Haram, has operated outside of the borders of Nigeria, so it's made it very difficult for the Nigerians to, to deal with. So he's, he's stuck in a, between a rock and a hard place, and Nigeria is a, a strong uh, leader in the region. I mean, they've led in Akawas, they've been involved in AU, now it's an economic power in Africa. So in a sense it's an embarrassment for them not to be able to do something and, and so this is where the reluctancy probably comes in, waiting, waiting, trying to do something himself but nothing's happening. Do you think uh, the Nigerian government in the case of the girls and perhaps more broadly is open to negotiation to money to whatever it might take we've seen in the past that they have given up some hostages for cash in this in this case I don't think Boko Haram is really uh, I, I, I would I'm of the mindset that they're not up for cash on this one or they would have asked from the beginning if it was foreign workers potentially maybe who knows but uh, not for these girls unless I think it's a political play I think there are some individuals in the north that support uh, secretly Boko Haram that provide the, 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 what, what it needs and there are several people that want good luck Jonathan out of the next elections. Okay, Rudy Atala, thanks very much for coming in with Thank the background. You. Thank you.